Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this really cute Jack and Oogie Boogie nail set. So let's jump right into it. So first things first, I am starting off with my most popular nail shape and length of all time. It is medium square. I go through so, so many nail tips of these, and this is just called plain square on Enel Couture's website. That is where I get them. Um, it'll just say square. It doesn't even say that it's medium length or anything. Um, so if you're looking for them, that's what they're called. And um, I'm using those. I did go ahead and buff them already. And then once I was done buffing, I dusted them off, made sure there was no dust. Then I applied my base coat gel. Because the nails are already medium length, uh, one coat of the base coat gel is perfectly enough and by base coat gel I mean the clear coat so the beetles top coat is what I use or beetles base coat sorry um, And once I have that down and that's cured then I'm going in with my nude base color So I need a nude base color for every single nail on this set because um, The customer that ordered the set specifically requests what she wants each nail to look like I absolutely love that about her like she knows exactly what she wants every single time and and she always gives me an exact like breakdown of what she wants the thumb to be, the pointer, the middle, the ring, everything. Um, and sometimes I do love that. As much as I love making freestyles, sometimes I love when, um, you know, I have like a direct, I have like an exact, um, like, I don't know how to explain it. But like basically I know exactly what I'm going to be making. Um, and when I do a freestyle, I just come up with it in the moment. So it's kind of hard and I kind of stress about it. But anyway, I did a pink base for her. She always requests this pink base color. And then I'm going in with these black drippies on the middle finger. Um, she just requested black drips. She didn't tell me specifically what kind. So I just did it like this. And I think she ended up loving it. So I am going ahead and just doing the drippy notion. Um, you're going to want to use any type of brush for this. Long, short, it does not matter. Um, you're just going to make sure that you have a very good amount of product on your brush. That is going to help create that drippy effect and you're going to want to start from the bottom to the top so as you can see i'm holding my nails tips down um you're going to want to start from the drippy part and then go all the way up that way a majority of the product that's on your brush gets taken off while you're doing the bottom part and then at the top it can get a little thinner um and then you connect it and fill it all in it is very easy to do this and this is a very popular design for halloween time um honestly you could do this with like a bloody looking color as well and then it'll look like blood drips it's super easy i'm pretty sure a lot of you guys already know how to do it but that's all i'm doing for that for that nail next thing i'm doing is i'm grabbing a a uh, longer brush that is a little thinner and then I'm going to go ahead and do a French So I'm doing a French on the thumb and the pinky and this is actually the nail set that I'm going to be doing the sugar glitter on a new sugar glitter method that I have tried So hopefully it lasts her a while, um, but I'll explain that in a second when we get there um, And the black gel polish that I'm using is from nails by dev. It is the lights out black gel polish and um, It is the best of the best gel you could ever use like that. This black gel polish is incredible um so I'm doing a really nice even layer and then after that is all done I am going to go ahead and cure that so once that's all finished um that's when I'm going to be going ahead and getting started on the sugar glitter but I'll just let you guys watch the French for now
Okay, so the black gel polish is all put down and cured and now I'm going to go in with a mixture of a sparkly black gel polish from Nails by Dev with a, a mix together with my McCart rhinestone gel. So a lot of times when you want to do sugar glitter, you might notice that it just does not last and I did have the same concern from my client or my customer, I guess. Um, she did tell me that the sugar glitter nails just don't last even though she loves them. So I felt bad and I was like, dang, I never realized that they weren't lasting because I've never personally worn them. That's why it's so important to wear your own design so you can see how it holds up and everything like that i'm definitely going to start doing that more often but i just never knew that and no one had ever brought it to my attention until um her and then i also saw a video recently from drea's nails i think it's called i think her name is called drea's nails on instagram she made a video saying that sugar glitter doesn't last and that it will chip and she said to just grab a rhinestone gel and mix it together or put that down and then put the sugar glitter directly on top of it while it's wet and that is exactly what i did here so i did the mixture of the glitter and the mccart rhinestone gel and i feel like it's holding very well so i grabbed this little manicure brush after i dumped the glitter on so once i dumped the glitter on basically i put it into the lamp to cure i made sure to cure it for exactly two minutes to make sure it was fully cured through and then i grabbed a little manicure brush and dusted it all off and made sure that there was no extra black glitter because this black glitter will get everywhere so i like to fully scrub them down like i scrub them hard to make sure all the extra glitter is off and i was scrubbing it super hard and none of the extra glitter was coming off afterwards which means i think this method does work very well so if you guys are having trouble with your sugar glitter sticking or yeah having trouble with it sticking and it's chipping on you um try using the mccart rhinestone gel then dump the glitter on top while it's wet then cure and then take off all the extra glitter that's left behind and then see how it lasts so that is my new method that i'm going to be trying out but now for this pointer finger i'm going ahead and doing another french but except this one is going to be a spooky vibe so this one's going to be orange french with some black lines so i'm going ahead and doing the black outline around the smile line and then i'm going ahead and doing the stripes i'm sorry if you guys hear that in the background my dog's drinking water but i'm just going ahead and doing the stripes and i'm just doing a mixture of swirly kind of stripes like they're not going to be so so perfect they're kind of spooky looking um i think this is basically what gives that other jack skellington effect because of like jack skellington's outfit so yeah i'm just going ahead and doing this i actually recently made a very detailed jack skellington and uh nightmare before christmas nail set but i have yet to edit that one but i'm gonna edit it and upload it for you guys as well um, in case you guys did see that on my Instagram, but I'm going ahead and now grabbing a rounded brush with a little bit of black gel polish just at the tip of it. And I'm going to be slightly making this nail look a little bit more, I don't know what it's called, like old or I don't know. Basically, I'm doing like a very light black ombre in a way. It's just making it look um, spookified. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but yeah, I'm just doing this um, and this is going to give it that very spooky type of effect and that way it doesn't look so orange honestly it really does help tie in uh all the black elements on all the whole entire nail set and then once i have it the way i like it it was just very subtle um i'm going ahead and mattifying so i think the matte top coat that i used today was the koopa matte top coat it is one of my favorites um the nails by dev matte top coat is my favorite for characters because it really brings them to life and makes the colors vibrant it has almost like a kind of little satiny finish um but the koopa matte is a really really pure matte like there is no shine or no sheen at all so i don't like using that one for characters i like using it for sets like this where um it will just really make the black gel polish pop so much like you could see how the black gel polish looks super 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 black and it's because of the matte top coat um so anyway now i'm going ahead with some white gel polish and my nine millimeter liner brush from nails by dev i'm going to be filling in the silhouette of the characters so i am freehanding the character design like i've painted oogie boogie so many times so i already knew what i was going for and i also painted jack skellington so many times um and once i have the silhouette down of what i think it should look like then i'm going to go ahead and fill it all in with white gel polish the reason why i am also using white gel polish for oogie boogie is because he is a bright neon green color and because i already have that really pink base down um i don't i don't think that his uh neon green is going to stand out the way i want it to so i am going to be placing that white gel underneath 
then curing so that I can then go over it with the neon green so it could really stand out and pop on top of the white gel base. Um, and for Jack, I already did his eyes and his face, so or yeah, his face, and then I did his little eyebrow lines as well with the white gel. Now I am going ahead and doing um, his eyes, his nose, and his mouth with black gel polish, the same one I used on the whole set. And then once that's curing, then I move on to the other hand, and now I'm going to be doing the green Oogie, Oogie Boogie slime green color. Um, he is just a really bright green. Honestly, you can't miss it. You can't mess it up. Just make sure it's bright and you're good to go. Um, and yeah, I'm just mixed together a bunch of colors to get this color, honestly, because I don't have a color like this, I think. And um, yeah, so once I was just starting to fill it in, I saw that there was a little piece of lint. It always bothers me so much, but I like using these stands because I could just mess them up. Like, honestly, I get them from Amazon or, or AliExpress, so I just mess them up. But I kind of want to get new stands for my videos because I feel like bad that you guys have to look at these ugly nail stands. But I don't know. I'll figure that out later. I need to find some cute ones, maybe from Shein or AliExpress. But now I'm going to be finishing up Jack Skellington's detailing. Um, so I did his mouth going all the way across his face. His face has to look very rounded. Um, and honestly, this is more of a simplified version of Jack. I've also actually never painted Jack on nails this short before. I've only painted him on long and extra long lengths. So I was kind of just trying to navigate how to fit everything in perfectly. But it turned out super cute either way. Um, and yeah, so I'm going ahead and just outlining him. His whole entire face is outlined. So just like this. And as you can see, that really brought it to life. Like outlining him really makes all the difference. And, um, yeah, so I'm doing that. And then the lines across his mouth are just very thin. You want to just make do little thin little stitches and it's going to make it look very cute. And then going in with some shading. So I'm going in with a base coat mixture with a tiny drop of black gel polish like tiny 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 like it needs to be very sheer and this is going to create the perfect shading color shading your characters is going to bring them to life like this makes all the difference um when you're shading your characters you just want to add shading in places you think it would be like right here underneath his uh, chin where his neck would be because his head is very rounded there's definitely shading there um between his eyebrows there's definitely shading because his eyebrows are scrunched and of course his eyes are hollow so there is going to be some shading there as well because they're just black holes basically um and then now moving on to oogie boogie i'm going to be doing the same exact thing for him ex like as far as the outlining and then creating his features and then shading as well so i'm going in and just doing the outline and basically creating little stitches as well and then his eyes are kind of just the hardest part of him he's actually a very easy character to draw honestly but it's just getting the eyes proportionate but then at the same time when i if you look at him like in the movie different angles one eye's bigger one eye smaller so it doesn't even matter like his eyes squint a lot so it doesn't matter exactly how big or how small you make them they're really tiny sometimes and then they're really big sometimes so you don't have to worry about it too much um he is such a fun character to draw the nightmare before christmas is one of my favorite movies of all time like i am so obsessed with it i kind of want to do a nightmare before christmas themed christmas tree this year but i i don't know i feel like nightmare before christmas gives me halloween but then it gives me christmas vibes as well so i don't know what to do i'm like so conflicted on that um i know i'm kind of rambling but I, I just I just don't know what theme to do my Christmas tree because last year I just did like red white red and white candy cane gingerbread type of theme and this year I kind of wanted to do Grinch but I'm like uh, I don't know if I want to do Grinch I love Grinch as well so I don't like I don't know um but yeah I can't wait for Christmas vibes even though I'm definitely soaking in and enjoying the Halloween and fall right now um and yeah so anyways now I knew for sure I wanted to do the background a little different um I realized that after I started painting Jack, I just didn't want the background to be pink. So I'm going in with this really pretty sparkly glitter orange from Nails by Dev. Um, and this is all going in on on, to on top of the, the pink, but the rest of the nails are already cured. So like any black details that I did, I did cure already. I just always cure it off camera. And then to make the character pop even more, I'm grabbing a orange gel polish called Pumpkin Butt, I think from Nails by Dev. And then I'm going ahead and outlining the character in that. It's gonna make him look like he's almost like glowing in a way, but not glowing. I don't know how to explain it. Like if he's standing out more and you can't see, it's very subtle, but like in person you could tell. And I think it really did make all the difference. So I just added that around him, almost like a little halo type of effect, just so that um, it stands out. And then, 
I like the fact that I decided to add the orange glitter because it really ties in the pointer finger. Like I didn't want to leave the character's background pink because it just didn't go and I feel like the orange glittery background goes way more uh, so that the pointer finger isn't the only thing that's orange on the whole hand. You know what I mean? Um, I like to do little things like that. Uh, thankfully, she didn't tell me that she wanted the background orange, um, but she did tell me I could, like, specifically on the character nails that I could do whatever design I decided was best. So, thankfully, I was able to do that. And for Oogie Boogie's mouth, his mouth is always very widely open. It's always open most of the time. You could also do, like, a smile, but I like doing the big wide open mouth. I feel like it's his, like, signature look. And then I'm grabbing um, the thinner brush and very little product on the brush, and I'm doing the little stitches on his mouth. This is going to just um, make his details even more prominent. Like sometimes people forget to add the little stitches and stuff and I feel like it makes all the difference. Um, and then doing his eyebrows, making sure they look angry or, you know, he is a villain, I guess. Yeah, he definitely is. So yeah, the little mad eyebrows are definitely an essential and adding the stitches around his body wherever you could fit it is great. If you do this on a longer nail, of course, you'll have way more space to be able to add stitches and details. Um, but now going back in with the shading color and I'm going to be shading all around. Again, his eyes are hollow and his mouth as well. So I am going ahead and adding shading around those areas um, in between his eyebrow area and just basically by the stitches where the stitches would be because I think those would create shading. Um, and then once I'm done, again, mattifying the nail and... I, I love the way characters look when they're mattified. It just looks so great. But this is how the set turned out once it was done. Um, I forgot to mention I also put a bow on the pointer finger and I do etch the back of the bow before I put it on. But here is the nail set in the box. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. As always, I have so much fun making these videos for you guys and showing you guys my process. If you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in my next video. Bye!